but yeah, really good result um, yesterday. So it was about um, 3%, uh, so 4% above our forecast, 3% above consensus. Uh, and both um, Australasia and North America were um, earnings were above what we were expecting. Um, in saying that, the result wasn't perfect though. So if you look at return on funds employed, that was down a little bit. Um, and revenue was a bit softer than what we were expecting. However, that was more than offset by a really strong margin improvement, especially in North American business. Um, in terms of the outlook, um, that was uh, pretty vague, uh, as usual, with management guiding to um, higher growth or higher earnings growth in FY24. Um, and, you know, after adjusting um, my numbers, I've kind of come out at about 5% um, EBIT growth in FY24. So what that puts Aurora on is 15 and a half times FY24 PE, um, yield about 5%. And, you know, the stock has had a really good run um, over the past um, couple of months. Uh, but despite the, the strong run, um, it, it is still trading uh, below its historical average multiple about 17 times. Um, so I do think um, 15 and a half times, I think it still looks reasonable. And hence, I, I still think there's um, further upside in the share price over the next um, 12 months. Although in saying that, in the very short term, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a, a little bit of profit taking. Uh, and um, I guess if it does happen, um, then, you know, happy, pool, uh, happy to pick up Aurora uh, on the pullback. Um, on Endeavour, so, um, yeah, so that result uh, itself, um, slightly uh, below um, expectations. Uh, retail was slightly above, uh, but hotels were slightly below um, with hotels margins um, impacted by the change in sales mix. And so what that means is that um, gaming sales, uh, which is the highest margin part of the hotels business, that grew the slowest uh, compared to accommodation, food, and, and, and drinks, um, and hence that had a negative impact on margins. Um, in terms of the outlook, um, now, yeah, training in, in both retail and hotels is pretty much now um, back to, to normal. Uh, and management said that while um, customers are being more value conscious, um, they are yet to see a significant amount of trading down. Um, that trend um, towards premiumization and people looking to explore new products and things like that, um, that uh, continues. Um, and, and, you know, those things are, are typically high margin for, for Endeavor. Um, the key negative uh, uh, to point out in the result was um, significantly high interest costs. Um, and so, you know, after rolling through um, that, um, that, that, that did push my um, FY24 to FY26 um, NPAT forecast. Um, down by about 7%, and hence our target price um, also comes down. So um, Endeavour's now trading about 19 times uh, PE, uh, yield of about 3.8%. So it doesn't look too bad, I guess, if you compare it to Woolies and Coles, which are trading um, somewhere between 22 and, and 25 times. Uh, but, uh, you know, with Endeavour, um, it does have higher regulatory risk, um, especially around gaming. And, and I think, you know, there is a, a Queensland election um, in October next year, um, so, you know, potentially if, if uh, New South Wales was anything to go by, that could be a hot election topic. Um, and, and just keep in mind that Woolies um, still owns about 9% uh, of Endeavour. So, you know, there could be an ongoing overhang um, in the stock. And we all know that Woolies are, aren't uh, natural long-term holders um, of Endeavour. So hence, um, uh, just remaining cautious um, on Endeavour. Um, and then I um, thought I mentioned, uh, I guess, PWH as well. So I uh, resolved out last night. Um, yeah, pretty good result. Um, it was um, brought in line with our expectations. Um, so the stock has been weak over the past six months and I guess understandably so following the weaker than expected first half result, which was um, mainly due to higher costs. Um, and I think a couple of people um, were thinking that potentially the, the full year result could be weak as well. So I think uh, the fact that earnings were in line, I think is a pretty good outcome. Um, key highlights, uh, motorsports uh, looks like one of the key highlights. So Revenue growth there was about 6% uh, above what we were expecting. Uh, emerging technologies, which was, um, you know, a big focus uh, for the market, that was slightly weaker, about 3% uh, below um, our forecast, while um, all the other uh, segments uh, were broadly um, in line. Um, the other thing, uh, I guess, to point out is that um, if you look at, if you compare all of uh, PWH's current contracts, uh, the ones that they, they were either won or the ones that they are still in discussions with, um, and you compare that to 12 months ago, uh, that number is significantly up um, on 12 months ago. So, you know, definitely heading in the right direction and, and still plenty of growth um, still in that pipeline. Um, balance sheet, very strong. Um, net cash of $17.5 million. Um, and, and while the stock's not cheap, you know, it's trading on about um, 34 times PE. Um, I do think it's one of the highest quality businesses um, that I cover. 
um, you know, with a very long runway of growth.